Hello, Tiago. Hello, Mike. Hello, Caio. Hello, Mike. Hi, Tiago. Hi, Caio. Thank you for joining us. Thank Absolutely. you for having me. So are you an iOS developer? Yeah. At the moment, I'm an iOS instructor. Thanks to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. But yeah. For I, how long have you been a developer? I started developing iOS apps in 2013. I did some other stuff along the way. So I would say six years. Six years. And you went to the Apple Academy, right? Yes. How I was it? I started working with iOS at Microsoft Innovation Center. Then I joined Apple Academy. And it was really interesting. And now I don't understand why they didn't teach how to test. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, it's really focused on APIs. And there's a lot of problem thinking and how to solve real world problems and big idea and design thinking. There's this whole, OK, let's solve problems. But the coding part is OK, I guess. So there's a lot of design as well. Yeah, design and also business, the, the business side and entrepreneurship. So yeah, yeah. actually the, the class, the, the whole group was composed of three programmers for each designer and business guy. So yeah, and we would join classes on design with people from Apple in some cases. Awesome. Fantastic. And how can we help you today? OK, so I was talking to a colleague on the topic of system design interviews for big companies and how the requirements change at scale and, in, and how to deal with some problems. And the topic I, I bring today is how to deal with foreground out of memory crashes. So we were talking about Facebook. Facebook had this kind of problem in the past because the app allows infinite navigation. You can go from your feed to some user profile, to his post, comments, another user, and you can navigate infinitely. And in apps that allow that, you can run out of memory because you are yes. increasing infinitely your memory footprint. And on this topic, one of the questions we could be asked in an interview would be, OK, so how to deal with out of memory crashes, how to deal with it passively, like when you receive a memory warning, and what can you do proactively to reduce your memory footprint? Uh, one of the examples, two examples we were thinking about was TikTok. TikTok supports the iPhone 4S. So it's a five year old app supporting a device, a device that was already five years old when it was when the app was released. So it's 10 years old now. And thinking about supporting videos in a crazy navigation in 500 megabytes of memory is a little bit crazy. And the other example is WhatsApp. WhatsApp has the mission of being on all devices in the planet. So iPhone for S is good in comparison to some. So Did if they you support? have this kind of mission, no, the they dropped S? support for for S. <laughs> yeah. They broke so, their mission. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if you have this kind of mission and you intend to fulfill it, you have to care about managing your memory. Yeah, even in new devices, you can always run out of memory. It's not infinite, yeah. right? If you do things wrong. You know, maybe a mistake can lead to memory leaks and yeah. very quickly you can lead to out of memory issues and the, the system is going to kill the app, right? To, yeah. to pre preserve the system consistency. So iPhone 4S, they support it. What is it? iOS 9? 9. <laughs> yeah. 9. <laughs> From all those big apps I could find, it's TikTok's the only one that supports iOS 9. Facebook dropped it, Instagram dropped it. Yeah. I think there's some banking apps that still support it as well. Yeah. I think Amazon Kindle was supporting it up to last year. <laughs> so it's not that there's still some apps supporting it, but even, even if you have the newest devices, you can run out of memory. 
Yes. It's not infinite. <laughs> Yeah, we're so, yeah. talking about iOS 9. If you support iOS 11, you would have the iPhone 6 with one gigabyte of memory. So yeah, it's double, but it's not infinite. Yeah. And even if you have a lot of memory, doesn't mean you should use yeah. all the memory. Right? You need to be a good citizen <laughs> and use only what you need. Don't use more resources than you need. OK, so yeah. let's have a look at the project you sent us as the example. So this is just yeah. a prototype simulating this issue, right? Exactly. I took the essential feed case study from the, the course at the point on bonus live session four, the image comments, before the image comments challenge. Mm -hmm. And I changed the project to, instead of loading images from the API, I created a mock loader in the composition route and bundled some really big images, like 5,000 pixels in the, in the project to, to really simulate and understand what happens when the application crashes. There's actually a nice message from, the, from Xcode when the app crashes, it says message from the bugger terminated due to memory issue. So to understand what does it look like, what am I looking at when, I'm, when I have an application that has foreground crash, foreground out of memory crashes. And yeah, the this app basically loaded these images in the feed. And when you click in one of them, it creates a new page with the same images infinitely. So we can get a crash. So it keeps building up memory. <laughs> yeah. I didn't change the logic on how to get the, the image to display on its cell, I simply changed the loading. So if there's something to be done on displaying the image, I haven't changed that. So it's something we could do to prevent to, to be a good citizen. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's some big numbers there. So it probably won't crash here on the device. On my on the simulator, but on the yeah. device it would. <laughs> yeah, the, my iPhone XR would crash around this two gigabytes. Footprint. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So yeah, it's building up memory, and if you have infinite navigation, like the screen can go to the other one, and you know can keep like Facebook, you go to someone's profile and you can see their friends and then you see a friend's profile and then you see their friends and you can go infinitely, right? Lo building up uh, a stack of views. And if they use a lot of memory, you will eventually <laughs> blow up the stack. <laughs> yeah. All right, so what can we do? Let's say you got an app and it's crashing and you need to fix it. What is the simplest thing you can do? Well, the first solution I, I thought about was on the application delegate implement the did receive memory warning to avoid the crash. So when we re receive a memory warning, we can grab the navigation controller, get all the view controllers in there and discard everything that's not the first one and the last one the user navigated to. But if we have a more complex navigation, like let's say we are using tab bar controllers and each one of them can have a different navigation controller, this can get out of hand because we, will, we would have to push each one that could be having problems. And mm. it's not ideal. It avoids the crash from what I tried, but there has to be a better way or other ways to do it. Yes. All right. So here you would get the current navigation controller and pretty much like free up the stack and keep only the first and the last. All yeah. right. But this also implies that this method is going to be triggered on the, on let's say the next push, right? Because if it pushes and it waits, I don't know, like a couple of seconds and then the, the method is triggered, there will be, I don't know, some inconsistent behavior there, right? Because it yeah. would just, Pop back, yeah, okay. That's the quick and, quick and dirty solution, just <laughs> to see, okay, I can fix yeah. this problem. I know what to answer on an interview, but yeah. 
Okay. So one thing you can do is to not let the navigation stack build up, right? Yeah. That's another solution. Prevent the problem. Because here it's, as you say, that's the passive approach. It's like you deal with the problem when you receive the memory warning. <laughs> and the proactive approach is not to have a memory warning in the first place, right? Yeah. yeah. And this can get out of hand as well, because as you said, you can have a very complex navigation with tab bars, with modals, and this code here would have to know how to navigate through all this stack and know what it can free or not. And this can get like thousands of lines of code at some point. <laughs> This is the quick and dirty solution. The other one is not to even let the navigation stack build up. So let's see. Uh, you should say show detail, show image, detail. Where is it? Show next image. Show next image. All right. So this is the code that will pop or push the navigation controller. So one thing you can do is before pushing the new one, you pop the last one that is already there. So you always have only, if you go back, you'll go to the first screen that started this flow, but you don't build up like thousands of your controllers in the stack. So this is another thing you could do. Uh, let's see here, controllers equals navigation controller, view controllers. Then you can remove the last one before you add a new one. Instead of pushing, you use the set view controllers will be controllers plus the new one, the image detail. They made it true. Let's see. So this is where you can still navigate. We just cannot remove on the first one. So otherwise we don't have a home to navigate back. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So it doesn't build up, but it's fine if you have nothing to go back as well. If that's the use case, like you, yeah. it's, it's a transition, right? There's no going back. If you want to go back, that's fine. You can even check if controllers uh, count bigger than one, right? Then you remove last. Then you always have at least two. But it doesn't build up. It never goes more than what three hundred. As soon as it presents one, it pops the other one and frees the memory. So it's always three hundred. It doesn't build up until two gigabytes. <laughs> yeah, great. It always one frees of the, the last one. One of the solutions we think about, but did you know quite how to implement it? Was to limit the number of view controllers we could display so yeah and there you could say oh let's just cap it at 10 view controllers so it will not grow indefinitely because thinking about the user experience maybe he wants to navigate some steps back but it doesn't make sense to navigate 200 steps yeah. back all the way to mm -hmm. and this is application specific some applications yeah. will say you know what don't let more than two some will say no more than 10. And someone say, no, it wants, I want it to be infinite. I want it to be infinite. I don't want to ever change the stack. So the user can always go back to the previous step, right? So this is one that if you can change the stack, so pressing back now might confuse the user because like, oh, that was not the last screen I was in. <laughs> yeah. Right? So this is another solution. If it makes sense to your application, which is another easy solution, right? Mm -hmm. But if you need to keep the navigation stack growing because you want to keep the history of navigation, you can at least release the large resources on view did disappear and reallocate them on view will appear. So when you transition to one navigation to the other, you free all the resources because you don't need them anymore. The screen, the, the, the view is not on screen, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, so you have a... List view controller, for example. So what triggers the whole thing is the refresh, right? So here you would have the view did disappear. View did disappear. And you free up the resources. 
because you don't need them. The screen mm -hmm. it's not visible anymore, right? And here you have the view will this view will appear will appear. Then you refresh or you know like reallocate resources. Because a view controller is not that expensive. What is expensive is the views it loads and all the the images it holds as well, you know, the resources, resources in there. Yeah. Like this. Now you can have an infinite navigation and still gonna build up memory, but a view controller is not that expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, you can add a bunch of view controllers, it's not gonna blow up. Like you will have to actually try to maliciously <laughs> break the application to do it if you're freeing up the resources correctly this is another thing you can do yeah. it saves memory but increases probably processing time and disk reads you know so it's always a trade-off when you are optimizing your code you're optimizing for memory you're optimizing for cpu cycles you're optimizing for disk reads <laughs> it's always you need to balance that depending on your application makes sense and this way you can build a very large stack a history of transitions in the application without blowing the stack <laughs> yeah from from what we've think to implement one of the ideas was to just keep the view models in a separate array and recreate the view controllers when needed i don't know how much space or much memory would it save compared to having the view controllers with the necessary information, but would be another step of optimization if needed. And yeah, but view controllers complex. are very lightweight. Yeah. In my experience, view controllers are very, very lightweight. But I could try if you measure and see like, oh, we can still need to improve a little bit. Maybe that's the next step. And we create the stack as needed. It'll be interesting with Swift UI as well. Mm -hmm. To build like a complex stack of navigation without yeah. blowing up memory. <laughs> because navigation in Swift UI is still a bit unknown how to handle it properly, like at least deep navigation, with like thousands of screens, let's say hundreds. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Another thing you can do is loading 300 megabytes of image looks very wasteful as well. Yes. So compress all those images that you are loading. If you're bundling them in the app, compress them as much as you can without losing the quality, you know, find the ideal size, resize them with before bundling them. Mm -hmm. Let's run the app again. What if we resize it precisely for the frame they need to be in? Yeah. And we bundle in the app already with the specific size they need to be. You even crop them differently for 3x for retina di display, you know, and for the 1x, like 1x, 2x, and 3x. And precisely the size they need to be Yeah. when they're in the bundle, right? Or when you're loading from an API as well, a lot of APIs allow you to pass the frame you expect, and they will do the cropping in the back end. Mm -hmm. But some APIs don't. They will just send you like a massive image. That's fine. You load the massive image, and maybe you will keep it in disk. But when you're showing it on screen, you resize it before putting on screen to optimize that as well. Oh, so okay. you never you never have that much memory used because you will resize the image precisely for the for what you need, right? But resizing UI images can be expensive too, you know, an expensive operation. Because to resize them, first you need to inflate them into memory and then do the operation to resize them, right? Mm -hmm. So you will use a lot of memory to perform that resizing optimization but yes. on if you're using there's a framework called image io they provide apis that you can resize an image without loading them into memory <laughs> oh, okay you create a, an image source you provide the kind of operation you want to do there like oh, i want to perform a transform i want to resize like scale down and it can do that. It's much more efficient without inflating that whole image into memory. But if you're resizing a UI image directly, then you need to load into memory, 
and then perform the scaling and then free up the memory. But if you use CG image source, it's just a reference to a source there's somewhere, maybe in, on disk, for example, and it can mm -hmm. perform operations directly on that source, which is more efficient, memory efficient. And for iOS 15 and above, maybe in three years we can use this new API. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can use this preparing thumbnail and it passes a CG size telling exactly the size you want for the image and it will return a very optimized UI image. So again, we don't need to keep all of that in memory all the time. It's a very good documentation here as well. Mm -hmm. But iOS 15 plus. But CG image source, I think it's like iOS 4 yeah. or iOS 5. It's pretty good. Let's see the image framework. Image IO, iOS 4. There you go. Mm -hmm. So resize the images. If you're loading from, from an API, you don't have control of the resizing. You can use CG image source, but if you are bundling those images and you know their size up front, bundle them already compressed because then the app size will be smaller as well. And when using them, you'll be more efficient as well, memory wise. Great. So reactive approach, wait for <laughs> <laughs> memory <laughs> warning, and then you free up whatever resources you can, or you don't even let the stack build up by popping before pushing the next one. You can do it in one pass with the set view controllers API in the navigation controller. If you need to keep the navigation stack history, then you release the resources that can be recreated, mm -hmm. right? So we release on view did appear, did disappear and recreate them in view will appear. What else? Compress the images as much as possible before yeah. bundling in the app resize them to precisely the size you need. And if you need to do this in a runtime, use the image IO framework, which is more efficient. Make sense? Great. Makes sense. There's also a WWDC session about iOS memory deep dive. So this is session. Two thousand eighteen session four one six. I recommend. Okay. I'll be sure to watch it. And then you can have very complex applications even on iPhone four S <laughs> or before. <laughs> iPhone three G. Yeah. Does it answer your question? Yes. Just one extra question on the same topic. If we decide to release the, the resources on the view lifecycle, I feel it might get repetitive, repetitive. So I understand we should be doing it on views that we know are giving problems or having problems in memory. So it's not necessarily necessarily something we will do in the whole application, but doing in each and every view controller and understanding which resources to be released. And maybe it's in, in our case, the uh, resources for the cell and in the, in the, it has another controller and there's the presentation logic. We can release, I feel it's a little bit complex and I don't, I'm I'm not sure if it's presentation logic because it deals with showing and removing a view from stack, but we are actually controlling the, the view in this case and it's the view lifecycle. Uh I, I feel it might get out of hand if we try to do it in the whole application. So what should I look for? Well, why would you do it? Why would you do it for the whole application though? No, uh, it would get complex for the whole application. And how can I justify doing it for a single view and maybe two or three, and I start to have this oh. duplicated logic and. 
Yeah, ideally you'll be, you'll be measuring where you have issues, where you see the memory allocating a lot and optimize only on those views, right? So they should, like most views will not need this kind of optimization. Only some they're using a lot of resources. Now, if you see this is happening in multiple screens, maybe you can create an abstraction that can be reused, but that would depend on, on your application, right? For example, in the program, we teach you how to create a list view controller that can present any kind of list. Now, if you implement here, you free up the resources in this generic list view controller, which can be a collection view controller. Everyone that uses that will get it for free, right? The resources will always be allocated when needed. For example, here you could set a data source dot uh, pie snapshot and you pass an empty snapshot, for example. So now everyone that is like using this list view controller, which can present any kind of cell, will get this like resource uh, reallocation for free. Yeah. But remember that now this is going to use more processing time because every time yeah. you navigate back and forth, you'll be probably fetching images again. So another thing you can do to optimize this is to use an NS cache. NS cache to keep those resources in memory because NS cache already implements the memory warnings. It already listens for memory warnings and free up whatever is cached to there when needed. So you can cache your resources on NS cache. And if there's a memory problem, it will free up already for you. Mm -hmm. Or when you go to the background as well, it frees up the memory automatically. And when you rebuild the application, you bring it up again to the foreground or you navigate back to there. If the cache is not populated, then you load the resources again. So there are a bunch of things you can do depending on what kind of problem yeah. you're trying to solve. But yeah. one way of reusing it is if you have a reusable abstraction there, like this list view controller, then you implement this optimization there, like you just free all the data source data and refresh again on view will appear. Yeah. And to prevent many API requests or many disk reads, you use an NS cache, but not here. You would have an implementation of that in the cache side, in the infrastructure, using an NS cache, which is an in-memory uh, cache to prevent disk usage or network requests as much as possible, mm -hmm. while you're still keeping memory footprint low. I was thinking on releasing the resources deeper, like on the image view. And my my question was, oh, how would I get the the message there? But yeah, it makes a lot more sense to release the resource earlier. If it's you, you should not necessarily care to release just what is actually uh, occupying space if you can recreate the the remaining info easily yeah because you think about it we have here let's say a view controller and then there's a view inside this view there's a table view and the table view has cells and the cells has an image view yeah. and you have to pass this message all down the chain to someone to deallocate it instead of it you just completely deallocate the table view and reallocate the table view data again and you get all of these from a higher level right and you it's much simpler to reuse that then yeah. going very down and trying to optimize at the view level, maybe at the top level would be easier to manage. Definitely. And it's always a, a balance of CPU cycles or disk reads or memory usage. <laughs> That's the, yeah. as old as computing. <laughs> In some cases, user experience also gets in the equation. Right. Great. That's it. Even if you're using new devices only, only support iPhone 12 Pro, doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not use more memory than we need. Let's be good citizens. Exactly. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Thiago. Thank you for joining Thank us again. Absolutely. <laughs>
okay. keep bringing those challenges to us. Yeah, really sure good. will. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.